Good evening, and a warm welcome to all our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters in Christ, to the Minor Basilica of St. Anne in Bukit Murtajam, Penang. On this most solemn occasion, commemorating the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord, we are gathered here as our hearts are filled with joy and thanksgiving to celebrate the elevation of His Eminence, Cardinal Sebastian Francis, the Bishop of Penang, to the College of Cardinals by His Holiness, Pope Francis, on the 30th of September, 2023. Let us rejoice, for God continues to sanctify His Church on earth and through His Son, Jesus, who brings healing and peace to the world.
之中，有高兴万事，有高兴万事。这是耶稣所定的日子，我们在其中有高兴万事。这是耶稣，这是耶稣所定的日子。Love and news forever. And by the grace of God, we'll never carry on. It's love and news forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. Forever, God is faithful. Of the papal bull, we now invite His Grace, Most Reverend Julian Liao, the Archbishop of Kuala Lumpur, to read the papal bull, which records the appointment of His Eminence Cardinal Sebastian Francis to the College of Cardinals. Francis, Bishop, Servant of the Servants of God, to the Venerable Sebastian Francis, Bishop of Penang, Elected Cardinal of the Holy Roman Church, salutations and blessings. In you, Venerable Brother, we have found outstanding gifts. Of brilliant merit to the Catholic Church. In this consistory, we enjoin you to the Scarlet College, and by our apostolic power, we appoint you Cardinal Presbyter. With all the rights and offices of cardinals proper to your order, we assign. To you, the distinguished Church of our affectionate city, Mary, cause of our joy. To the rector, the clergy, and all the rest who are attached to the same, we beseech them fatherly 
that when you shall take possession of the church, they shall receive you with a joyful heart and reverence you with all their love. Moreover, while we are filled with exceeding joy that having been drawn into the Senate of the Catholic Church, you will be a helper for us in the excellent conduct of our affairs for the honour of the Roman See. Sustained by our benign God, we also pray for you that he may strengthen you with his gifts of grace and assistance. Given at Rome in the Lateran on the 13th day of the month of September on the memorial of St. Jerome, priest and doctor of the church in the year of the Lord 2023, the 11th year of our pontificate, signed His Holiness Pope Francis. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you and with your spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Christe, Christe, Eleison. Christe, Christe, Eleison. Kyrie, Kyrie, Eleison. God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Oh, wow. 
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who when Christ had been baptized in the river Jordan, and as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, solemnly declared him your beloved Son, grant that your children by adoption, reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, may always be well-pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. இறைவாக்கினர் இசையா நூலிலிருந்து வாசகம் ஆண்டவர் கூறுவது தாகமாய் இருப்பவர்களே நீங்கள் அனைவரும் நீர்நிலைகளுக்கு வாருங்கள் கையில் பணம் இல்லாதவர்களே நீங்களும் வாருங்கள் தானியத்தை வாங்கி உண்ணுங்கள் வாருங்கள் காசு பணமின்றி திராட்சரசமும் பாலும் வாங்குங்கள் உணவாக இல்லாத ஒன்றிற்காக நீங்கள் ஏன் பணத்தை செலவிடுக்கின்றீர்கள் நிறைவு தராத ஒன்றிற்காய் ஏன் உங்கள் உழைப்பை வீணாக்குகின்றீர்கள் எனக்கு கவனமாய் செவி கொடுங்கள் நல்ல உணவை உண்ணுங்கள் கொழுந்ததை உண்டு மகிழுங்கள் எனக்கு செவி கொடுங்கள் என்னிடம் வாருங்கள் கேளுங்கள் அப்பொழுது நீங்கள் வாழ்வடுவீர்கள் நான் உங்களுடன் ஓர் என்றும் உள்ள உடன்படிக்கையை செய்து கொள்வேன் தாவிதுக்கு நான் காட்டிய மாறாத பேரன்பை உங்களுக்கும் காட்டுவேன் நான் அவனை மக்கள் இனங்களுக்கு சாட்சியாகவும் வேற்றினங்களுக்கு தலைவரா தலைவராகவும் தளபதியாகவும் ஏற்படுத்தினேன் இதோ நீ அறியாத பிற இன மக்களை அழிப்பாய் உன் கடவுளாகிய ஆண்டவரே இஸ்ராயலின் தூயவரை முன்னிட்டு உன்னை அறியாத பிற இனத்தார் உன்னிடம் ஓடி வருவார் ஏனெனில் நீ அவர் உன்னை மேன்மைப்படுத்தியுள்ளார் ஆண்டவரை காண்பவதற்கு வாய்ப்புள்ள போதே அவரை தேடுங்கள் அவர் அண்மையில் இருக்கும் போதே அவரை நோக்கி மன்றாடுங்கள் கொடியவர் தம் வழிமுறையையும் தீயவர் தம் எண்ணங்களையும் விட்டு விடுவார்களாக அவர்கள் ஆண்டவரிடம் திரும்பி வரட்டும் அவர் அவர்களுக்கு இரக்கம் காட்டுவார் அவர்கள் நம் கடவுளிடம் வரட்டும் ஏனெனில் மன்னிப்பதில் அவர் தாராள மனிதனர் என் எண்ணங்கள் உங்கள் எண்ணங்கள் அல்ல உங்கள் வழிமுறைகள் என் வழிமுறைகள் அல்ல என்கிறார் ஆண்டவர் மண்ணுலகிலிருந்து விண்ணுலகம் மிக உயர்ந்து இருப்பது போல உங்கள் வழிமுறைகளை விட என் வழிமுறைகளும் உங்கள் எண்ணங்களை விட என் எண்ணங்களும் உயர்ந்து இருக்கின்றன மலையும் பனியும் வானத்திலிருந்து இறங்கி வருகின்றன அவை நிலத்தை நனைத்து மூளை அரு அரும்பி வளர செய்து விதைப்பவனுக்கு விதையும் உண்பவனுக்கு உணவையும் கொடுக்காமல் அங்கு திரும்பி செல்வதில்லை அவற்றே என் வாயிலிருந்து புறப்பட்டு செல்லும் வாக்கும் இருக்கும் அது என் விருப்பத்தை செயல்படுத்தி எதற்காக நான் அதை அனுப்பினேனோ அதை வெற்றிகரமாக நிறைவேற்றாமல் வெறுமையாய் என்னிடம் திரும்பி வருவதில்லை ஆண்டவரின் அருள் வாக்கு இறைவனுக்கு நன்றி
攻读《圣若望》一书。亲爱的诸位，凡信耶稣是墨西亚的，都是天主的儿女。如果我们爱一个为夫的，也必爱他的儿女；如果我们爱天主，又遵循他的诫命。便知道我们一定也爱天主的儿女。原来爱天主，就是遵循他的诫命，而他的诫命并不难以遵循，因为凡是成为天主儿女的，必战胜世界。使我们战胜世界的武器，就是我们的性德。谁战胜了世界呢？不是那信耶稣是天主子的人吗？这一位就是经过洗礼的水和牺牲的血而来的耶稣基督。他不但是经过水，而且也是经过水和血而来的，并且有圣神作证，因为圣神就是真理。原来作证的有三个，就是圣神、水及血，而三者都是一致的。我们既然接受人的见证，天主的证据当然更有效力，因为天主的证据就是他亲自为自己的儿子作证。天主的话。感谢天主。Sing a l e l u j a to the Lord. a l e l u j a to the Lord. And with your spirit, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. In the course of his preaching, John the Baptist said. Someone is following me, someone who is more powerful than I am, and I am not fit to kneel down and undo the strap of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. It was at this time that Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee. And was baptized in the Jordan by John. No sooner had he come up out of the water, than he saw the heavens torn apart, and the Spirit, like a dove, descending on him. And a voice came from heaven: "You are my Son, the Beloved. My favor 
rests on you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Your Eminences, Your Excellencies, distinguished representatives and delegates of religious and civil authorities, dear friends. A few weeks ago, I was in Korea while visiting the major seminary of the Archdiocese of Seoul. Bishop Emeritus and Cardinal Yom brought my attention to the beginnings of the church in his country. And talking about the very first priests who were trained in Korea, among whom we remember the very first Saint Andrew Kim, he said, there was a tiny house where the first candidates used to be trained, but for their theological preparation, they were sent abroad in places selected by the missionaries to be centers of formation. Many of them went to Penang. And when I heard that name, I was thrilled with joy. And here I am today with you, my dear brothers and sisters, right in the middle of this beautiful church in this blessed land of Penang. Thanks to the sacrifice of many, your place has been a beacon of hope for the whole of Asia. Some hundred years later, today, it is a son of this land who has become a cardinal. Our dear Cardinal Sebastian Francis. He, who writer the Collège General, spent part of his initial formation before obtaining his academic titles both in Rome and in the US. We are here then to live with joy and gratitude this festive moment. We do so by looking at the great mystery the Church invites us to celebrate today, the baptism of the Lord. Contemplating this mystery, we are drawn to grasp even more deeply the beauty of our being church gathered around her pastor. In the simple narrative of Mark, we are introduced to the very moment that encompasses the whole mystery of incarnation. By entering the waters of the river Jordan, Jesus has plunged himself completely into a poor humanity, as we have just celebrated at Christmas. And by emerging from the same waters, he has brought us up. He has pulled us on high, profoundly renewing our humanity. This is what Mark wants us to gaze at, offering as if the snapshot of this divine moment. Three are the witnesses to this event. Water, a dove, and a voice. Water, as we said, recalls our condition with that intimate desire of purity, transparency, freshness that we bear inside and that is rarely fulfilled. The Lord has come exactly to share our concrete situation and to offer us that liberation that no one else can offer. All you who are thirsty, come to the water, we heard in the first reading from the prophet Isaiah. 
You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Perhaps we can ask ourselves, from where I need to get up? What prevents me from being pure and transparent as I was made in baptism when all my sins were washed away? The dove comes with gentleness, with its movement almost uncertain, and rests on Jesus. The Spirit comes like this, with kindness and agility, and he can transform my life into a masterpiece. So we can ask ourselves another crucial question. Do I invoke the Holy Spirit? Do I welcome him in my life? Do I look for his consolation, or rather I am content with the cheap ones the world seems to offer? The voice confirms that that man plunging into waters is indeed the one we were waiting for, the Messiah, the Savior. From the day of our baptism, we are made one with Christ. We have become beloved sons and daughters of the Father. Another question, do we realize that? Do we make room to the voice of the Father in my daily life, building up my personal relationship with the Lord in prayer, especially through the meditation of the Word of God and Eucharistic adoration, to be able then to serve the poor around me? Here then we have three images that can accompany us in our feast today. We apply them to the particular event we celebrate today. His Eminence, Cardinal Sebastian Francis, is one of you. He drinks from the same water. He al has always been emerged in this reality from 1977 as a priest and from 2012 as your bishop, the fifth bishop of Penang. As it is said in his coat of arms, he wishes, to, he wishes that God's will may be done in his life after the example of Mary, our mother. Fiat voluntas tua. May your will be done. In this way, he wants to invite everybody to walk along the same path because he knows that welcoming God's will in one's life is the secret of true happiness. In his service as your bishop, His Eminence, Cardinal Francis, never ceases to invoke the Holy Spirit and to celebrate the sacraments of the Church in the power of the Holy Spirit. He knows very well that he is a pure instrument and that the very effectiveness of his ministry comes right from the Spirit who often takes us by surprise, like the gentle flight of a dove. Above all, His Eminence knows that he should be like John the Baptist, a voice that announces not himself, but the Lord present among you, and sometimes even unknown to many. For the powerful voice of God to confirm you in your Christian vocation, it is necessary that he, it resounds first and foremost in him, so that his ministry would be its radiating effect. As a cardinal, your shepherd is ready to preserve this divine voice even in the midst of oppositions and tribulations to the point of pouring out his own blood for the faith and for the unity of the Church, as the red of his robe reminds us. And we heard in the second reading 
This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. Water, a dove, and a voice. In the light of these images, we live to the full the grace of this luminous day. Your diocesan community and the whole of the church that is in this region receives today a twofold gift. With the entrance of your shepherd in the sacred college of cardinals, the bond of unity with the Holy Father, Pope Francis, is made stronger and more evident since Cardinal Francis is now a member of the clergy of Rome, thus becoming more closely tied to the ministry of the Bishop of Rome. On the other hand, your local church sees herself in the light of the wider communion of the universal church, preserved in the unity of faith by the Holy Spirit through the visible bond of the successor of St. Peter. The width of this communion is well visible on our faces, on the languages we speak, starting from mine, a non-Asian who has always been welcomed by the benevolence of the Mongols, where I live, and of many other brothers and sisters of Asia. Yes, people's hospitality, like the one I'm experiencing right now with you today, is only one yet very encouraging feature of the profoundly religious traditions of this noble continent of Asia. Faith in Christ makes of us one large family, diverse and yet one, holy, catholic and apostolic church. We are different yet united in faith. I left Ulaanbaatar, the capital city of Mongolia, with negative 30 Celsius. And I am here plus 30 almost, in this paradise of colors, warmth and beauty. Is it not this the always fascinating experience of being members of the Catholic Church? Pope Francis himself has reminded you, dear Cardinal, of this when he wrote to you a letter in July last year, last year saying, and I quote, inculturation of faith and evangelization of cultures. This is the very heart of the ancient and always new mission of the Church. We wish to live together, Your Eminence, this mission in Malaysia and in Mongolia and even in Rome, taken up in love for Christ, who urges us to announce, or rather I would say, to whisper the gospel to the heart of Asia and of every person we meet. As St. Francis of Assisi used to say, let us always preach the gospel and, if necessary, let us use words. You are indeed an expert in communication. You are gifted in that. May your life and your witness radiate the joy of the gospel in Penang and in the whole world. With and like Mary, our mother, and our model, who with her silence has given us the Savior. We entrust you to her, dearest Cardinal Sebastian, and we look at her to fulfill our mission, to bring to all Christ's unconditional love. Amen.
Let us stand as we offer up all our needs to the Lord in the silence of our hearts. For the prayer of the faithful, we will pray the litany of the saints and martyrs of Asia. Now let us turn to all the saints, asking them to humbly intercede for us and bring all our petitions to God, the Almighty Father, through Jesus Christ. Congregation, please kneel for the litany of the saints of Asia.
Congregation, please stand for the offer tree.
pray, brother, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to honor the revealing of your beloved Son, so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the waters of the Jordan, you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism so that through the voice that came down from heaven, we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us and by the spirits descending in the likeness of a dove, we might know that Christ, your servant, has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty with, without end, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun, to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, <clears throat> therefore, O Lord, as we <clears throat> celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance if we elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, we blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Anne and St. Joachim, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Sebastian our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our, to our departed brothers and sisters, and especially Father Michael Maniakam, and to all who are pleasing to you at your passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to sing.
deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us stand for a moment of silence. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you in his kindness and pour out saving wisdom upon you. Amen. May he nourish you always with the teachings of the faith and make you persevere in holy deeds. Amen. May he turn your steps towards himself and show you the path of charity and peace. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Congregation, please be seated. We will now call upon His Excellency, Archbishop Wojak Seluski, the Apostolic Nuncio to Malaysia, to say a few words. Eminences, dear brothers, bishops, priest, religious sister, consecrated civil authorities, I see in the first row, the chief minister, and former ambassador to the Holy See, welcome. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, to all the first, all greetings and blessings from the Holy Father, Francis. He always ordered us, as his nuncius, to first things, to greet every time, always everybody gathering for the celebration. So, his heartfelt greetings, his blessings. Your Eminence Cardinal Sebastian, the announcement of, by His Holiness Pope Francis of your nominations nomination as Cardinal was for me and surely for many others, all of us, a source of great joy. We are in this shrine of Saint Anne. If somebody didn't believe of the powerful, of the, of the strong influence of Saint Anne over, his, over her grandchild, now we have the example. Another miracle happened here. We have a cardinal. <laughs> Once more, I wish to express my heartfelt, warmest congratulations and sincere best wishes with the sentiments of devotion and affection that we share from our common mission in the service of the Church and of the Holy Father in Rome. This gesture of great esteem and trust manifested by the, to you by the Holy Father is an acknowledgement and appreciation of your precious, humble witness and service you have rendered to the Catholic Church in Malaysia. It is likewise a clear sign of Pope Francis' heartfelt attention for the evangelization of the people of God in our country and in this region, which is especially dear to His Holiness. I am confident that Your Eminence will surely continue to offer your contribution to the benefit of the evangelizing mission of the Church now Universal Church. 
Now, I have um, say that our Episcopal Conference is particularly privileged. In our conference, we are counted how many? 11 members, active members. And of them, two are cardinals. So 18% is so high percentage of the cardinals that any other Episcopal conference around the world can get counted. <laughs> On this happy occasion of today's Thanksgiving Mass, I wish, I, in which I am delighted to share with you and the church in Penang Diocese, I would, I would also like to assure you of my special prayer that the Lord, through the inter intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mother, Mary, Mother of the Church, and St. Anne, powerful St. Anne, may bless you and render fruitful your ministry. Once again, my congratulations and my best wishes. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. It is with great honor that we now invite His Eminence, Cardinal Sebastian Francis, to address us. I think it is only appropriate to introduce my brother cardinals and brother bishops who are here with me and special guests and all of you. So I extend a blessed welcome to all and let me begin by introducing my brother cardinals, bishops and special guests present here. First of course is His Eminence Cardinal William Goh, Archbishop of Singapore. Please identify yourself, you all know him. Second is His Eminence, the youngest cardinal still in the world, Cardinal Giorgio Marengo, Apostolic Prefect of Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia, our homilies for today. His Excellency Archbishop Wojcik Saluski, the Apostolic Nuncio to Malaysia and Apostolic Delegate to Brunei. My brother bishops, Most Reverend Julian Liao Beng Kim, Archbishop of Kuala Lumpur, and currently the President of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of Malaysia, Singapore and Brunei. And also Most Reverend Simon Po Hun Seng, Archbishop of Kuching, Sarawak, and the President of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of Malaysia. Most Reverend Dato John Wong Su Kao, Archbishop of Kota Kinabalu, Sabah. Right Reverend Bernard Paul, Bishop of Malacca, Johor Diocese. Right Reverend Joseph He Tek Kwang, Bishop of Cebu, Sarawak. Right Reverend Richard Ng, Bishop of Miri, Sarawak, who will launch who will launch the Alkitab Versi Bonio Edisi Catholic uh, and together with his team after my speech, Richard Ng. Right Reverend Dato Cornelius Pyong, Bishop of Keningau, Sabah. Right Reverend Dato Julius Dusin Gitkom, Bishop of Sandakan, Sabah. Reverend Father Robert Leong Sun Choi, Diocesan Administrator of Brunei, Darussalam. Bishop Joseph Do Man Hung, Bishop of Pan Thiet, Vietnam. Right Reverend Dato Dr. John Ha Tiong Hock, Archbishop Emeritus of Kuching, Sarawak. Right Reverend Dato Anthony Selvanigam, Bishop Emeritus of Penang. 
And finally, Right Reverend John Bosco Pania Kit Charon, Bishop Emeritus of Ratchaburi, Thailand. Also present here are the major religious superiors of Malaysia, Malaysia Singapore, Brunei, and the President, Friar, Father Derek Yap, and the entire major religious superiors of Malaysia, Singapore, Brunei. Can you stand, please, wherever you are? Show, who was, show us who you are, all the major religious superiors of Malaysia, Singapore, and Brunei. And now I ask all the Reverend Fathers, religious brothers, sisters, deacons, and seminarians to stand up. And let us welcome them and greet them too. We are delighted that we have also Right Reverend Dr. Stephen So Chi Cheng, the suffragan bishop of the Anglican Diocese of West Malaysia. Reverend Dr. Sherman Shastri of the Methodist Church, former General Secretary of the Council of Churches Malaysia and former Executive Secretary of the Christian Federation of Malaysia, together with his wife, Maya Shastri. <laughs> Reverend Matthew Punnos of the Syrian Martoma Church, General Secretary of Bible Society Malaysia. Mr. and Mrs. Tan Kong Beng, Vice President of Bible Society of Malaysia and Executive Secretary of Christian Federation of Malaysia. <laughs> Reverend Father William LaRouche, our dear Assistant Secretary General of the Federation of Asian Bishops Conference. <laughs> Esteemed guests from the state and federal government, and we begin with uh, young Ahmad Barhormat, Tan Sri Bernard Dompo, the first Malaysian ambassador to the Holy See Vatican, <laughs> chairman of the board of directors of Boys Town, Monfort Boys Town, Sabah, and chairman of Small Medium Enterprise Cooperation Malaysia, Ministry of Entrepreneur Development and Cooperatives. And YB, Yang Berhormat, Tuan Lim Guan Eng, the former Chief Minister of Penang and former Finance Minister of Malaysia and Member of Parliament for Bagan. The Chief Minister of Penang, YB Tuan Chao Kuan Yao, is represented by YB Puan Lim Siu, Penang State Exco for Social Development, Welfare and Non-Islamic Religious Affairs. YB Tuan Daniel Gui Zi Zen, Penang State Exco for Youth, Sports and Health. And representatives of the inter-religious community, Mr. Sukhindrapal Singh, Analalaki Joga Singh, Chairman of Malaysian Consultative Council of Buddhism, Christianity, Hinduism, Sikhism and Taoism Penang Branch. Mr. Arokya Das, Chairman of Christian Federation of Malaysia Penang Branch and member of the MCC BCHST Penang Branch. Mr. Viveka Ratna Dharman, Chairman of the Hindu Sangam Penang State Council. <laughs> Mr. Richard Chia, who is our new Executive Secretary of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of Malaysia, Singapore, and Brunei. <laughs> Distinguished guests, I will be short. Devotees of St. Anne, fellow disciples and people of God from Malaysia, Singapore, Brunei, and other parts of the world. It is with deeper sentiments that I address words of gratitude to our Holy Father, Pope Francis, who appointed me as the second Cardinal of Malaysia to the College of Cardinals via letter dated 9th of July, 2023. The Holy Father's letter reflected on three core reflections for me. They are, number one, the universality of the Catholic Church founded on the Pentecost experience. Number two, the inculturation of faith. And number three, the evangelization of cultures. And all three, are inseparable. 
our Holy Father highlighted that at Pentecost we witness the birth of universality, the spirit of universal brotherhood and sisterhood within the church and beyond the church to encompass the entire world which has nothing to do with uniformity, he stressed in the letter. The Holy Spirit poured out at Pentecost and every day since Pentecost is leading the way forward. Pope Francis has declared that this year, 2024, is the year of prayer in preparation for the Jubilee Year of Hope in 2025 with the theme Pilgrims of Hope. This year will also see the conclusion of the Synod on Synodality in October 2024 in Rome, of the Church of Apostles, of Disciples, and the people of God participating in communion and mission. And let us roll up our sleeves for our very own Malaysian Pastoral Convention in 2026. And let us move forward together with the Malaysian bishops with the Holy Spirit leading us. The missionary priorities and energy that flows from the Holy Spirit in Asia and the Universal Church is an invitation to go beyond the traditional ideas of mission. It includes the following key indicators. The engagement and dialogue with people of different religious traditions, viewing them as partners in God's mission rather than competitors or adversaries. Number two, it sees mission as addressing all social issues, including poverty, inequality, discrimination, domination, manipulation, and corruption. It reflects on an evolving understanding of faith, of the role of faith in contemporary society. It includes environmental stewardship and empowering local leaders and communities to take ownership of their faith and work together towards a more harmonious and just world. These are our mission priorities. We Asians are storytellers. We desire to tell the story of Jesus Christ with all, and to use Cardinal Giorgio of Mongolia's expression, to whisper the gospel. And I add, the gospel of joy, the gospel of mercy, the gospel of hope in Jesus Christ with all Asians and beyond. Asia is young, and the church in Asia must share and proclaim the gospel with a young and energetic spirit. We want to thank God for the sacrifices of all Asians who keep the planet young with the gift of children, the precious gift of children. The spirit of the church in Asia is an inclusive spirit, a creative spirit, and a bridge-building spiritual energy. A gentle reminder from the mystic St. Catherine of Genova, who died in 1510, who said, Renewal without reform is the corruption of the church. And I add, the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ without the call to reform and repentance is superficial religion. Finally, I would like to welcome everyone to this awesome shrine of St. Anne where heaven and earth are one and all God's people can freely worship in spirit and in truth and miracles happen every day. We welcome also the pilgrims of all nationalities, faiths, creeds, races and cultures who gather here because of a singular love for St. Anne, the mother of Mary, and the grandmother of Jesus Christ and the God she worships. Hence, this shrine is affectionately called the Shrine of Harmony. 
I wish to thank all present here and online for participating in this Thanksgiving Solemn Mass on the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord, which brings the Christmas season to a close and ushers in the ordinary time of the liturgical year tomorrow. My thanks and gratitude to Reverend Father Martin Arlando, head of the Penang Diocese Liturgy Commission, and all those assisting at the liturgy. Deacon Lazarus Jonathan, administrator of the Minor Basilica of St. Anne, and his entire Minor Basilica team. Mr. Daniel Roy, who is now the chairman of the CBC MSP Social Communications, coordinator of the Thanksgiving Solemn Mass Committee, and fellow committee members from all over the Diocese of Penang. The choir, comprising young and energetic members from the Diocese of Penang, communion ministers, hospitality staff, altar servers, wardens, ministries, all ministries involved in this Thanksgiving Mass. And to all collaborators and volunteers who have provided the support and assistance in making this Thanksgiving solemn Mass and dinner that follows a blessing. On behalf of the Diocese of Penang, of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of Malaysia, Singapore, Brunei, of the Federation of Asian Bishops' Conference, and the Universal Catholic Church, we give heartfelt thanks to all of you for your gracious presence, both in person and online. And I wish to bless you again. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine on you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord uncover his face to you and bring you peace. May Grandmother Saint Anne bestow her grand maternal blessings from this shrine of harmony to everyone. Salam damai dan salam harmony. Thank you all. God bless. Thank you, Your Eminence. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we will now watch a video presentation to commence the launch of the Al Kitab Versi Bonio at DC Catholic.
we now invite His Lordship, Right Reverend Richard Ng, the Bishop of Miri and the President of the Bible Postulate of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of Malaysia, Singapore and Brunei to deliver his speech and to launch the Al-Kitab Versibonio at DC Catholic. Your Excellency Apostolic Nuncio to Malaysia, Archbishop Zaluski, Your Eminences, Cardinal Sebastian Francis, Cardinal William Go and Cardinal Giorgio Marengo, Archbishops and Bishops, Priests, Religious, State Dignitaries, Religious Leaders, all brothers and sisters in the Lord. I have the great honour to launch the Bahasa Malaysia translation of the Deutero Canonical Books of the Bible. The Deutero Canonical Books, or in short we call it DC, refers to the seven books of the Old Testament recognized by the Catholic and Eastern Orthodox but not by the other churches. So they are Tobif, Judith, Esther, Sirach, Wisdom, 1 and 2 Maccabees. The translation of the DC books is the first major translation project of the Bishops' Conference of Malaysia. Although individual dioceses, they also translate the Bible into the various indigenous languages on their own. So you have seen the PowerPoint presentation that it is a time-consuming and complicated process. Basically, the project was approved by the Bishops' Conference in late 2017 and uh, in early 2018 we had two rounds of training and after which the translation team started work and they managed to complete the work in uh, late 2021 and in between uh, we have a lot of field testing of the draft by native speakers and also review, revision, consistency check, proofreading uh, before we can do the layout and go to print. So we have 13 translators from the dioceses in uh, East Malaysia and one from West Malaysia who together with the AVB translation team, they work very hard to produce the first draft. So I'd like to honour their hard work uh, by calling those who are present, the translators and the AVB translation team. If you are here, please stand up. Not all of them are here. Can you please stand up just for one second? Thank you. Thank you. The newly translated uh, Deutero Canonical books will serve as a companion volume to the Architab Versi Borneo, or we call it AVB, which is very widely used by our new generation of Bahasa Malaysia speakers. The majority are from East Malaysia. So, uh, with the translation of the DC books, we now can compile a Catholic edition of the AVB. I'd like to thank the Board of Directors of AVB for giving us a blanket permission <laughs> to produce the first Catholic edition of the Bahasa Malaysia Bible. Thank you. Uh, so we have just printed the DC books as a supplementary copy for now. But in the near future, uh, we will print uh, both AVB with the Deutero Canonical books uh, to form the Catholic edition of the AVB Bible. So, as I look back uh, at this project over a number of years, uh, we can definitely see the Holy Spirit at work in bringing together many different people with their different gifts and charisms 
to make God's word more accessible, especially to our BM speakers. So the Holy Spirit is at work to unite the Christians in Malaysia. And to conclude, I'd like to say a very big terima kasih to all who have contributed to the translation of the DC books in one way or another, known or those who wish to remain anonymous. Uh, those present here and those who are not present here, and to anyone I might have missed out. So to one and all, a very big terima kasih and thank you and God bless you for helping to spread his word. Thank you. And now we have a very simple launching. Very simple. So this is the supplementary copy of the AVB. Right. Uh, we have some stocks available at the entrance of the Basilica uh, if you wish uh, to take a copy. And now I will present the limited edition of the AVB, the Catholic edition, to the Archbishops and Bishops present here. I'd like to invite the board of directors of the AVB. Please come forward to receive your copy. Dr. Wap, Yaw Wai On. Dr. Daniel Ho. Siu. Lehua. Uh, finally, I'd like to invite uh, Reverend Matthew Punos, General Secretary of the BSM, uh, the Bible Society of Malaysia. Uh, the end. Thank you, Bishop. We will now commence the group photo session. We would like to invite His Eminences, Archbishops and Bishops to join His Eminence Cardinal Sebastian Francis for the group photo.
Huh? They joined in? Yes, yes, yes.
All are invited to partake in the fellowship dinner at the church grounds. Thank you.